Hello, and welcome to the Monster Painter. This time round, we're getting all edgy and taking a look at some frost grave demons. So, it should be unsurprising that I bought this North Star Military official frost grave kit because of frost grave. My monthly gaming group is taking on the Red King campaign. And while Frostgrave is a miniature agnostic game, meaning you can use whatever miniatures you want in the game, the author, Joseph A. McClue, has used a cunning tactic to motivate me to purchase the official kit. You see, the bestiary includes a dreadful entity known as a Harut Stinger. A Harut Stinger is a crossbow-wielding demon, and you can search far and wide looking for a crossbow-shooting devil man, and the only ones you are likely to find are in this North Star Military Frostgrave Demon Kit. Now, some might say I didn't need to uh, buy the kit. I could just proxy in any old model, and they would uh, be right. But I am much too WYSIWYG for that. Besides, I really like the North Star Military Kits. They are solid models with a lot of variation and lots of extra bits. Of course, I'm going to use all the crossbow components because I really need all the stingers I can get. Alright, they are all assembled and I have the base coat on the armor. The kit yielded 8 Harut stingers armed with crossbows. I used a couple of leftover crossbows from some other North Star military kits to bring the total to 10. I will focus on getting them table ready first because I have a hard deadline. Game night. And boom! Painting is interrupted for the whole point of painting miniatures up, which is to play the game. The Stinger's first appearance is in Scenario 5, The Demons and the Madman. The table is ready even if the models are not quite finished yet. In the scenario, each player gets two treasures, two Harut Warriors, and a Harut Stinger to place on the table as they see fit. And while I don't give you a battle report, I assure you fun was had by all. Except me. I got murdered. My old arch enemy really kicked the tar out of me that night. Okay, I still had fun, but ouch! With their first mission out of the way, I can get to work on polishing up the Harut Stingers. As well, I finish all the other demons. They are diabolically fun to paint. Now let's take a look at the finished product. The first three are going to be straight up Harut Warriors. Solidly WYSIWYG, they are more than capable of fulfilling the role of Harut Warrior. Not that it's hard to find a mean-looking demon with a hand weapon. Still, I can always use another one. So welcome aboard, boys. Next up, we have the demons with hand weapons and shields. Not exactly the equipment Harut warriors are described as having, but who cares? They are totally suited to the job. Curiously, it does seem to be a lot harder to find demons brandishing shields. Most infernal combatants are equipped with great big swords and axes, claws and tentacles, with the occasional whip thrown in for good measure. Uh, this is to say, I like variety, and so I'm happy to have these villains added to my collection. Now, on to the three Harutes with great big weapons. It is certainly not hard to find a suitable demon wielding a big and deadly two-handed weapon, but this trio is holding its own in the role of Harut Longhammer. A Harut Longhammer is described as ha being equipped with a two-handed weapon, so sure, no problem. Curiously, the kit does not come with any two-handed Longhammers, though. Here we have a pair of crossbow-wielding Harut Stingers, created by scrounging and kitbashing. One crossbow is a part from the Frostgrave Soldier's Kit 1, and it has worked out fine. The other crossbow is from the Frostgrave Soldier's Kit 2, which depicts women warriors, and it required quite a bit of work to fit. As a result, the other demons cruelly refer to this fellow as Asmo 
Girly Arms Diaz. And finally, we are getting to the reason I purchased this kit in the first place. It comes with two different sets of four crossbows. This is the first sculpt, and I do really like them. It is a mellow action pose. The demons are loading their crossbows, readying for a deadly encounter. It's great stuff. They are the demons I needed, and they will see plenty of use throughout the remainder of the campaign. The last four Harut Stingers have their crossbows loaded and ready to shoot. I have to admit, I did not realize how hard it was to find demons with crossbows. Crossbows seem like a perfectly reasonable weapon for a demon. At any rate, now I have all the Harut Stingers I will need to run the campaign, and I'm really glad for that. I really like these North Star Military Frostgrave kits. They come with a tremendous number of options and are so readily and easily kit bashed. They are tons of fun, allowing you to create all manner of distinctive soldiers. And there's one particular feature of them that I really, really like. And it has to be the heads. These North Star military kits give you a tremendous number of different heads. There isn't quite enough to give all 20 models a unique head, but combined with all the other options in the kit, it's hard not to assemble a unique looking demon warrior. And after you've finished building all your demons, amongst all the other bits you have, you get a ton of leftover heads. They uh, fit comfortably with all the other North Star military kits, Frostgrave, Stargrave, Ghost Archipelago, on and on. It makes for super fun, super easy kit bashing, and I love it. Thank you, North Star. Lastly, I would like to mention this big, juicy pile of leftover bits. This kit is definitely very generous. Hey, Mr. Hand, you're an opinionated git. What do you think about the latest controversy from Games Workshop? Oh, yeah, I'm totally pissed off. Space dwarves are supposed to look like bikers. Total BS, if you ask me. No, no, the, the current controversy. Games Workshop has announced the release of a female Adeptus Custodes. What the hell is an Adeptus Custodes? Uh, 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 oh, oh, uh, they're super elite bodyguards of the Galactic Emperor. Oh, okay, and um, I care why? Uh, well, the Adeptus Custodes are supposed to be superhuman super dudes with an emphasis on dudes. Games Workshop is totally destroying the 40K lore by retconning her in. Uh-huh. They ruined 5,000 plus pages of lore by adding one new character. And uh, didn't GW retcon the lore a couple years ago? And aren't they going to retcon the lore in a couple years anyway? No, 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 people are are upset that the woke mob has totally ruined 40k. Ruined 40k by introducing a lady soldier model? Frankly, this sounds to me more like lazy woke whiner influencers making rage bait content for people who don't even play 40k. Mm, I'm not sure. People are way angrier about this than they were when the green M&M started wearing sensible shoes. Sure, sure, sure they are. I'm already totally bored of this. Can we talk about something serious? Like uh, how GW allows scalpers to enforce BOMO and drive sales instead? Hell no! Nobody wants to talk about real problems at Games Workshop. Well, okay. Let's look at a serious fight then. Um... 
monster fight. Ah, yeah, monster fight. And tonight's match features this vicious drow warrior wielding a pair of axes. A repaired and converted wood elf war dancer from Warhammer Fantasy Battles by Games Workshop. Verse this mind-bending mind flayer! A repainted, pre-painted D&D model by Wizards of the Coast from 2003. Who will win this underdark grudge match? Only the dice can decide! Ooh, ouch! I don't like that result one bit. All right, Sammy. <laughs> what bad? I'm gonna teach you a lesson. Huh? <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna teach you good. <laughs> yeah, you're gonna learn. Mighty Mind Flayer is victorious. All hail the new Ilfid Champion. Conversions, corruption, and heresy. Remember to like. Comment, subscribe, and ring the bell. Ring the bell. Painter.